In today's video, I will explain to you how good Alliance Keeps are and how to use them properly during war. So Alliance Keeps are a pretty straightforward thing. You build them on territory. You can see the circle around. In this circle, whatever march is garrisoned inside of the keep will automatically attack any march in this area. Obviously, being in the keep gives you an advantage because you can't be targeted by like cavalry or infantry or other marches. So it will always be kind of like a one on one duel. The only thing that can be done is for multiple marches to deconstruct the barricade and then eventually the durability will reach zero and the whole building will collapse. But during that whole time, your march inside will attack. And if you're attacking a melee march, for example, uh, infantry or cav, uh, they will basically just counterattack you, but they will not do a lot of damage to you. So you will always have the upper hand. Now, of course, there is a few research for that, that alliances will eventually get quite easily. But the thing to note is that you will be able to have as many people as you want inside of a keep, which does offer some pretty good strategic um, opportunities. It can only be mages or archers. You cannot put anything else in a keep, but you can put mages and archers. And one player can put one march in. So if you have 50 players, you can have 50 marches in, one from each player. Now, of course, having keeps at choke points like this, where enemies would be walking in, they will be getting attacked for free all the time. It is pretty straightforward to think that you should mostly have T5 players in keeps as they are going to be getting the best bang for your buck. Now, there's two situations on which you should be putting troops in, either mages or archers. Now, if you're going to put archers, which is going to be the majority of the time, as you can see, we have a T5 player here with archers. This is going to be good as you are going to prevent harassment. So right now, there isn't any war going on. So if a few enemies want to come and kill some people, well, they will be getting taking a lot of damage for free from our T5 archer. Now, of course, an enemy T5 can bring his own archer and fight, but it will be a pretty even fight because we are fighting T5 versus T5, and then people around can reinforce. And anyone who's not a T5 will just get demolished. Any mages, any infantry, any calves will just get bad trades the whole time they're walking in. Of course, having barricades around will help you because they'll get slowed, getting attacked. Uh, so and it's going to be very beneficial to have archers in this when you are most of the time not doing anything active. Now, the other hand, if we are having war where hundreds of marches are pouring up here, you do not want any archers. You want mages. Obviously, you will want T5 mages at the most. Like You want as many T5 mages in this as possible because mages are going to be exceptionally OP when there's a lot of marches because while they do not have their artifact skills available to them, their normal attack, basically uh, for Lilia, this ability, Flame of Vengeance, which does damage to two nearby legions and can be a little bit more with some talents, uh, and things like Velen's AoE, and, you know, they all have a lot of AoE, will work very well in a keep. So if 20 marches are coming up here, and then one gets targeted here by uh, the mage in here, well, the mage will be AoEing every march there all the time, which, if it's a T5 mage, it will cause a ton of damage to anyone coming up this ramp. Uh, so during war, you want T5 mages. Not during war, you want T5 archers. Because if you have a T5 with mages here, and you're not, nothing's happening, and an enemy comes with a T5 march of archers, they will 1v1 your mages and they will destroy them because they're the counter. Uh, so it's a fine balancing game. You do need to always kind of keep track of what's going on with keeps. It's mostly a T5 game because obviously the trades are going to be much better with T5s, uh, but T4s can go in during Massive War if there is space, of course, where it will be still beneficial to have a free march AoEing. But the rule is when there's a lot of enemies to attack, you need to have mages. If you have archers in them, get them out of there. They do not belong in there if many marchers are coming up. Now, this is the general principle of how the keep work, and it is on its own pretty good. Make sure to build barricades, make sure to have them in spots that are obviously going to be uh, cluster points. As you can see here, we have two of them in this area. We have one here that kind of go attacks around here and also will prevent people from marching here. Uh, so there's a few things to be done there, but Another thing that people seem to forget is every player can put one troop in per keep. So I could have one troop in this keep, one troop in this keep, and one troop in this keep. Now, 
what does that mean in war? Well, it works just like city hopping. For those of you who are aware, city hopping is going from one city to the other like this when you're attacking. So there's enemies here. Well, I'm going, I'm attacking the enemy. They're attacking me. Oh, I'm back in the city. They get untargeted. So their march start going back to their home. You come back out and you start attacking them. It requires the enemy to be constantly aware of what's happening and they can't go in their city, they can't heal, they can't fight anywhere else because otherwise you're just free attacking them. Uh, so city hopping is great also to move around if there's enemies, they can't attack you as easily because you're going from one city to the other without being in the field for very long. But the alliance keeps do provide that and they are able to go further out in the field without getting uh, kicked off by basically siege towers. Uh, so you will have a little bit of extra area to fight from. Now, if you put 30 members um, archer march in here, you wait for all the enemies to walk by. When your enemies are here, everybody unloads and attack. There's 30 marchers that just appear out of nowhere. You can't do that in the city because the city has a reinforcement capacity of a million, uh, which means, you know, four people can go in. In this case, three people could go in. Uh, so, of course, four or five people coming out of the city, like, oh, hello, we're here. But, like, if you have 30 people coming out of a keep, now that is something else. And as I said, you can have them multiple places. So it could look like an empty field here. Enemies come and out of a sudden there's 50 marches out of here, 50 marches out of there. There's an entire army, everything gets wiped. Uh, so of course this requires a lot of coordination, but in this game, winning requires a lot of coordination. Otherwise the differences between players, if you have T5s, this is what will create the strategy and this is what will create the advantages. It is obviously, advantage to the defenders because you can't attack with a keep uh, but this is something that i recommend everybody try and do use the keeps to city hop if you're getting attacked or targeted just go in the keeps hide even obviously you're not going to be a t5 player who is going to be staying the keep you're just going to be using the keep as a safe area to travel around to move around and to surprise your enemy uh, so there is a ton of strategy to be done with alliance keeps if you need information specifically, it will tell you how it works. Uh, but here, each alliance member can deploy one ranged legion. So you can only have one legion, but each member can, and there is no limit. So it will, you could tell at the bottom here, like X90. You can have 90 people in one keep. Obviously, the enemy can also tell. But if you look at an enemy keep, for example, I can see here that this keep has two legions inside of it. Uh, so this tells me, obviously, that the enemy has two legions. So if you do have 90 enemy, like, uh, of your own troops in one of your own keep, the enemies will know. But if they want to attack, they don't have a choice. Uh, so it is going to create a lot of pressure. Uh, so I would say utilize alliance keeps very well. Um, they are a massive tool for mobility as well as surprise attacks. Which is not really a surprise, but it's still like if they're not attacking us because they see 90 people, well, we still win. They're not attacking, right? So it really is a place uh, to use uh, very wisely in combat and again make sure that the people who stay in the keep are t5 archers if it's not a big war mages only if it's a big war if you have any questions about this make sure to ask in the comments i'll happily help uh, and tell you everything i know thank you guys for watching and i'll see you on the next video